right, so the time has come to build the chicken run. We have debated back and forth what type of fence we're gonna build, and we finally come to the conclusion that we are going to be using portable electric net fencing for the chicken coop run. In the past, we've raised chickens just free range, no fence at all, and we've also run them in chicken tractors. And here, with this type of land that we have, we both decided that that's just not gonna work. We have a lot of uneven land. We also have a lot of soft bog land that we're gonna be running a fence through. And we decided that putting in a permanent fence just wasn't gonna work for us. There's also two positives with the electric fence option that we're going with. One is predators. It's going to be helpful for that. It's not gonna work for air predators, but I'm not overly concerned with that at the moment. And two, it is going to be more functional for us throughout the year because we do have snow here in Alaska for maybe like six months out of the year and we will not be able to maintain the whole coop run, which is gonna be about 2,000 plus square feet. We won't be able to maintain that all with no snow. So we're just gonna have this area around the coop be an area that we can keep clear and we'll take the electric fencing out for those months. We have used portable electric fencing in the past, not for chickens, but we've used them on pigs and it works great. It's really easy to move, it's pretty strong and for the price compared to building a permanent fence, you just can't beat it. It's way more cost effective. We already have the charger and the battery system for our electric fencing around the garden, so we're gonna be tying into that. So we have quite a bit of work cut out for us today. We are going to try and attempt to make the whole chicken coop run in one day. Let's see how far we get. Let's go ahead and check out the fencing that we picked up. This is what we picked up. This is Premier One Fencing's 48 inch tall chicken netting, and we opted to get their fencing that is a little bit stronger. You are actually able to drive these stakes into the ground with a hammer because part of the section we're working with is really close to our driveway where we have really hard, compact soil. These are each 100 foot rolls. So we have 200 feet total that we're gonna be using to fence in the chicken run. Before we start running the fence back behind the coop, we are gonna decide where we wanna put our permanent gate. So we're aiming for a four foot wide gate and we are gonna put it near the entrance of the coop and also near where our compost pile is going to be so we can get in and out of here with the wheelbarrow when we need to. Okay, we'll get going on the gate. Time to start digging. All right, in our efforts to save a little bit of money and just to try something new, we decided to put in these posts without using any concrete. And it's actually holding up pretty damn good. These things are really strong. We just used some wood that we we're gonna cut into firewood anyways. And we dug in the ground two feet, put the posts in there, and then we just compacted it as hard as we could. And, I mean, they're pretty sturdy. And this is just gonna hold a little wooden gate right here. And that's gonna be how we get in and out of the chicken coop. So next thing to do is to start running the electric fence and we're gonna start right here on the side of this post and head that way with it. Okay, so this is the area that we are going to be stringing the fence through. We are going straight back. It's going to be kind of like a rectangle and I think that we're gonna go this direction right here. So I just am kind of clearing the way, making sure we don't have any trees or branches that will get hung up on with that fencing. We were originally going to use this whole forest kind of back here, which would be anywhere from four to 5,000 square feet. But that is really large for the chickens. And truthfully, we're probably gonna free range them. They are birds that are excellent at flying. I know that they're gonna jump this fence or fly over this fence in a heartbeat. So it's really more of a safe area for them to get away from anything that's chasing them. Clearly, again, it won't work for any air predators, but it may be a little nicer that there's lots of trees in here. I don't quite know. But this is what the area looks like.
So these are some of the struggles we're working with in putting this fence in. Uneven ground and it's also like peat moss bog land. So the stakes these come with, uh, I think it's only like six or eight inches that you can pound these in. We're trying to get this as straight as we can. Our old fence that we put in was in grassland, so it's just easy, you just stick them in and you're good to go. This, what we're doing, seems to work pretty good, is we're bringing big logs out here and we're actually drilling holes in them and then we're just sliding the stakes in them and it seems to be holding pretty straight. Typically when you're running one of these electric fences, usually the company you get them from, they'll have the plastic spikes that go on the ground. They have a metal on the bottom and then they're plastic so they're not gonna conduct electricity. We've used those before, but we opted to try something a little different because we needed to get these posts deeper into the ground. This one's pounded in the ground about two feet and it's just stable enough where it's gonna hold this fence. And then all we're doing to keep this metal post from touching the electric fence is using these two inch insulators. And we're putting three on each post. Okay, we've reached the end of our first roll, which is 100 feet. Now we're gonna grab the other roll and we're gonna start on the other side of our gate and work our way around and meet up with this end of the fencing. So Eric is working on the gate for the chicken run and I am just going along and clearing some of the branches that are touching or bushes that are touching the electric fence. We don't want any of that or want to minimize that. That's going to help it work the best it can. At the same time, I'm trying to do minimal disturbance to the forest around this area. I really like the way it is and I think it looks really majestical. So I don't want to come in here and just start ripping things up um, if I don't need to. So, so far everything's going good, but we still have to get quite a bit more work done. So Eric and I weren't sure if we had worms here, just being that the permafrost is so deep down here in Alaska, but we've been finding quite a bit of worms, not a crazy amount. And I have done some research and there are in fact worms in Alaska, you know, whether they're have been brought in. I think there's one type that's native to here. We've been finding them in the forest under the moss. So my plan is to gather some of that moss and forest floor and add it directly to our beds and to the compost. But I'm gonna put this little guy into the bed and hopefully they'll make more worms. Hey guys! Who wants to come out? Even though we're not quite done with the fence, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to get rid of all the shavings and the straw in their coop and move it out to the compost pile and I'll give them a brand new batch of straw.
Okay, yesterday we finished putting up the fence and we got it electrified. Or we had the chickens out here all afternoon and they did see themselves back into the coop at nighttime, so that worked out really well. And we have them back out here again today. So far they seem to be doing really well. We did go along the base of the fence and just put logs and kind of close up some gaps where they were able to sneak through. And again, they will, they are going to be able to fly over the fence probably pretty soon, but at least they'll have an area that's safe for them to come back to if there's any predators. Okay, so we have 29 chickens here. We have a mixture of cockerels and hens. We are not gonna keep all of the roosters, but for now we don't know who's who, so we're gonna wait until they're a little bit older. And our goal is to have about 50 laying hens with a few roosters to help make sure we have fertilized eggs and the moms can hatch out their babies. Therefore, we will have new chickens every year. So Eric and I are going to walk around and give you a quick overview of the chicken fence and the system we have here. The new chicken fencing is wired directly into our electric fence charger for our moose fencing around the garden. And we just dug a ditch from here over to the chicken coop, which is only about 15 or 20 feet, buried the wire in there and hooked it in to the poultry netting. This charger is capable of doing 25 miles and it's a one joule charger, so it's pretty powerful. We've already tested the wire over there off camera and it's definitely working. And we're gonna leave the fence off right now and we're gonna give you the tour around the fencing. So one of the cool things about this fencing is it's not permanent. Um, if they wear out this area too much, when we have more hens, we can always move it this way more. We can move it towards the road more, and we could also move it towards the back of the property, and we can add on as much of this as we want. So this thing obviously isn't completely predator proof, but in our experience, they do a very good job at keeping predators out. And I think the ones we're most worried about are gonna be smaller animals like foxes and weasels and things like that. So the chicks are a little under two months old and we're just gonna be letting them out while we're here. They're still a little too young to be out here on their own. And they actually can get through the fence if they jump up to these um, bigger gaps or if they find a little spot that we weren't able to get, they can still kind of crawl under the fence. But so far, so good. They seem to be staying in there and they're actually having a lot of fun scratching around in the woods. So we're just gonna walk around the fence and give you kind of different angles on what it looks like and the kind of terrain that we had to run it through. So overall we have nothing but good things to say about this type of fencing and it was a pretty easy install on our end and we will catch you guys next time. It's extremely hot. This thing really packs a, a punch. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> For laying. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. Today we are, okay, not today, I just went into that full. Okay. Bigger and bigger and they need to get outside. Okay, I'm gonna start that again. Time has come that we are planning on letting our chickens outside more. We are going to be building, okay, I'm gonna start that again. Okay. Four and chicken. We both decided that raising chickens and chicken. Just take a breath. <laughs> we both decided that